Hi everyone, it's Lisa from A Simple Season. Welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. Well, spring has sprung and I have a little bit of a mixed bag for you today. There's a couple of things that I am working on that I wanna share with you. And one of them is a fabulous two ingredient dessert that comes together in less than five minutes. So I wanna show you how I do that. And we're also gonna do a little bit of a spring spruce up as well, so let's get started. So now that I've got my kitchen all spruced up, I'm thinking that I want to create a centerpiece for my dining room table. And I want to see if maybe I can repurpose some things that I already have. And I think I'm going to head out into my backyard and see if there's anything that I can use from there. I really like the idea of bringing elements of the outdoors in and I have this little rock garden here and I'm thinking I'd like to incorporate a few of these stones in my centerpiece and I love the look of natural stones and I'll even use some of the bigger ones as bookends and I think they look so cool so I think I'm going to look through here and see if I can find anything interesting. I've got these really beautiful plum blossoms growing in my backyard and I think these will be gorgeous as a springtime arrangement so I'm going to cut a few and bring them in the house. So here's some really neat looking rocks that I think I'm going to use today and I just love the color striations in this one and I love the lighter tone of this kind of flatter looking one and this one is kind of a pumicey looking stone which is kind of cool and this one was a really cool find because it's actually a really smooth um, looking stone so I think all of these will look really nice and I think I can make these look really good in my little arrangement. And I also found these wooden beads that are part of the decor on my bookshelf, so I think I might use these as well. Another thing I was working on today was I was going through my makeup bag and organizing some of my lipsticks because some of you have been asking me about the colors that I've been wearing lately and I'm more than happy to share that with you. And as some of you know, I work in the cosmetics and skincare industry. So I just have some examples here of just some drugstore lipsticks that you can find just about anywhere that will suit most skin tones. So I'll show you what I've been wearing lately. The first one is this one by Maybelline and it's called Plum For Me. And if I swatch a little bit of the color, it just looks like this really pretty fuchsia, sort of a plum tone, and I really like it. My coloring is what's considered a high contrast coloring because I have dark eyes, dark hair, and fair skin. So I find that the colors that tend to suit me best are sort of rich, clear tones. Now, if your coloring is a little bit different, you might be warmer toned or have more golden tones in your hair. So you 
might suit different colors than I would, but I have some suggestions for you as well if that's your coloring. The other tone that I've been wearing is this one from L'Oreal and it comes in this shiny gold tube and the color, it looks like it says um, Nude Intense and the number is 174, but the color is anything but nude. It's kind of in the same vein as the plum for me, but it's just a little bit lighter, a little bit more rosy, and if I want something that's a bit more uh, lighter toned, this is what I will go to. Now, if your coloring is warmer and maybe your eyes are like green or hazel, or you've got um, that warmer toned hair, or you've got freckles, which is usually indicative of a warmer skin tone, you might enjoy this one uh, from Revlon. And this one is number 525. It's called Wine With Everything. And this is a wine toned, but it's warm. So it's like a warm reddish wine, and it's just so lovely for people with warmer skin tones to give um, lift to their features. And another one that might work well for you is this one also by Revlon, and it's called Toast of New York. And this one is a little bit warmer again, more of a brown tone, but so lovely if you're a redhead or if you've got um, like a freckly skin tone, that color would look fabulous on you. I also have two other colors that suits most skin tones as well. So it doesn't matter if you're warm or cool, both of these colors will suit you. It, this one is by Milani and the color is called Pretty Natural. And if I swatch that, it's just a really pretty rosy tone. And I find that as we mature, the rosy tones, whether they're on the cool or the warmer side, tend to be quite nice because they do give us a little bit of a more youthful glow. And if you like more of a nude shade, uh, that's something that's more natural. This is another one by Maybelline and it's called Crazy for Coffee. This one is a really nice nude tone. It's kind of got like a plummy brown undertone and this one also suits most skin tones. It doesn't matter whether you're warm toned or cool, it's right in the middle, so it suits most people. One more tip I'm going to share with you. When you go to the store and you try lipsticks, don't ever try them on the back of your hand like this to test the color to see if it'll look good on you. Where you actually want to test the lipstick is right on the tips of your fingers. And the reason why we do that is that the tips of our fingers actually matches the skin on our lips. So if you want to know how the lipstick is going to look on your face, test it on the tips of your fingers. And I'm gonna show you why. So this is a lipstick that my daughter has, and this is just one of those Maybelline um, vinyl lipsticks. And the color is peachy. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this lipstick on the back of my hand, and there it is at the top. So you can see it actually looks quite pigmented. So I'm now I'm gonna take this same lipstick and I'm gonna put it just on the tip of my middle finger. And if I show you here, you see it almost disappears, but on the back of my hand, it looks like a completely different color. So that's why it's always good to test on your fingertips. So now I'm just gonna go clean myself up and we'll go make the cake and I'll show you how the centerpiece turned out. So now I'm gonna show you one of the easiest desserts that you will ever make, and it only takes two ingredients, and you probably have one or both of them sitting in your pantry right now. And all you need is one box of angel food cake mix and one can of crushed pineapple. And if you don't have crushed pineapple, you can use tidbits or chunks or slices. Just maybe whiz it through your blender or your food processor for a few seconds so that it's all nice and crushed. And I'll show you what we do next. It comes together in literally 30 seconds and it's ready to go. So all we do is we take our angel food cake mix and dump it into a mixing bowl. And then we just take our crushed pineapple and pop it into the bowl with the cake mix. And now all we do is mix it. 
So you'll notice as you mix it up that the batter will get kind of frothy looking. You can see that here now, which is just perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. And now that we've mixed all that up, we just take our batter and put it into our baking pan like this. And you don't need to grease the pan, you can just put it in as is. And that's all there is to it. Now we can just put it in the oven and bake it for 30 to 35 minutes at 350 and it'll be done. So here's a piece of the cake right out of the pan and it is so delicious just on its own like this, but I'm going to dress it up a little bit with some whipped cream, a slice of pineapple and a little bit of mint. So here's how our cake turned out and I must say the texture of it is very light and fluffy. And it's also calorie wise because one slice of this cake is under 200 calories and what a great dessert that comes together so quickly with just a couple of ingredients. Take care everyone and we'll see you in the next one.